Today we're doing an overview of 2022 Year of the Water Tiger. We're going to take a look at what it means to change signs and change elements. It's all coming up. Hi everyone, I'm Donna Stellhorn, your practical astrologer, here to talk to you today about the Year of the Water Tiger, which begins February 1st, 2022. We're just going to be doing an overview today. There will be a later video at some point where I go into detail for each sign. We're going to touch on the different energies for the signs in this video, but the, the big video, that's still coming. For those of you who are new to the channel, you might not know that I write a book every year on Chinese astrology with predictions and feng shui cures. And so the Year of the Water Tiger book will be out around November. I also write weekly and monthly predictions for various publications, including astrology.com. And you can find my predictions for Chinese astrology as well as Western astrology on these websites. So let's take a little quick look back and so we can see the year of the water tiger in context. And that would start with 2020, that year of the rat that brought us the pestilence that was the pandemic. Now, of course, not every year of the rat brings a pandemic. Uh, the previous one brought the financial crash and you can go back in history and find how it does bring some sort of new beginning. So from 2020 and the year of the rat, we then are in our current year where I'm filming this now, 2021, and that's the year of the ox. And what that is about is taking all this new energy and then rebuilding from it. So this is trying to find our new routines, our new normal. Uh, it is incorporating the things that we're doing now that's different, but trying to pull in some things from the past and reestablish a foundation. So in an ox year like we're in now, there, there's really a focus on moving forward quite slowly, very deliberately, you know, testing the waters, you know, maybe going forward a little, maybe pulling back a little. And so we are seeing people really decide whether they still want to do the job they had before, whether they want to live in the place they did before. And so, you know, there's, while there seems to be a lot of movement, it's still, it's very deliberate. And it, it's, it is something that has maybe taken people years to plan. So then on February 1st in uh, 2022, we will go into the year of the tiger. Now, tiger energy, of course, is quite different than ox. The tiger energy is about this very impulsive, uh, almost explosive sort of feeling. In past tiger years, we have had that in a literal sense. In 2010, there was a big earthquake in Haiti. Uh, additionally, uh, the British Petroleum, they had a um, the Deepwater Horizon, the, this oil platform, it exploded. If we go back to 1986, a tiger year, that was when Chernobyl um, blew up. Also, the space shuttle Challenger exploded. Um, we had in 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1950, uh, there was the Korean War. If we go back even to 1914, a tiger year, that was when the Archduke uh, Ferdinand was killed and that set off the First World War. So, so that's just going back, you know, this century or the previous century. And, and you can see it's not every tiger year we get a big explosion, but a lot of them, something, something big changes. So the interesting thing about Chinese astrology is that it does give us an overarching energy for the year, which in Western astrology, we might derive from important aspects that are happening, but we don't have something definitive. And so different astrologers from a Western standpoint may come up with different themes. But in Chinese astrology, we are guided to an actual animal and element theme, and that really helps us determine what's going to be happening. So one of the things to do uh, as we enter a new year is to look at the qualities of that sign to see how those qualities might affect us on a global scale. So one of the themes of Tiger is the hero. 
And that is the person who is stepping up and doing something extraordinary. Now, of course, superhero movies have been popular for some time. So, you know, that's that's a trend that I don't feel is so connected to this because yeah, we can't really say in one year that that was a really significant thing. I think overall there is the trend of this idea that uh, you know, that, that we need heroes or that we want to be a hero. I mean, I do have a little beef with the superhero trend, which is the doing something really well instantaneously. You know, you're bitten by your radioactive spider or you fall into that vat of toxic waste and now you're great at something instead of putting in the hard work. So that's, but that's, that's again, that's not so connected to Tiger. Actually, that, that beef is a little more connected to Ox, which then beef, Ox, uh, anyway. <laughs> but in the year of the Tiger, what it boils down to with this hero trope is more uh, the striving for something bigger, striving for something greater. So in the year of the Ox, you might establish your position, you know, find where you're gonna live, find what you're going to do, and then, you from the starting point, like like your feet are in the, the, the starting blocks, now you can push off and go forward at, at an accelerated rate. So we will expect in the year of the tiger that nothing's done on a small scale, that all of this testing the waters that we're seeing this year, everybody, you know, thinking about moving somewhere, so they go and visit and, you know, or maybe trying a new career on the side before they jump in. None of that's happening in the year of the tiger. It is just leaping and then looking. And so that will be people moving to a new place without having ever visited there or quitting their job at a moment's notice so that they can take up, you know, poetry reading or something like that. I actually, I, I shouldn't have said it that way. You know, I know poetry reading is still a very valid thing to do. Another key word that we associate with tiger is restlessness. And, and that is this, this energy of, of feeling like you want to advance, but you can't. And so there is the, the, idea that you're going to leap into something new, but when you feel that you can't, you're just going to be basically pacing in the cage. And that is the restlessness that comes before the leap, that, that sort of, you know, knee bouncing, that tapping the fingers. So we're going to see that. And some people don't do well with restlessness. And so that can come out in other ways, uh, you know, more frustration, more anger, outbursts that seem to be completely unexpected. And then another keyword that we could associate with tiger is indecisiveness. And so all of these are coming together where the only way you can move forward is a gigantic leap. Uh, you are restless while you feel something is blocking you, or you are restless because you have not made the decision. And that is um, procrastination because you have not made a decision. Uh, and I think somebody out there gave a great definition of procrastination, which was that you don't have a good plan yet. And, and it's interesting because in a tiger year, while there is planning, there's so much of a sense of, you know, planning and then leaping in a, such a bigger way than the plan was even you know, talking about like saying, you know, oh, I'm thinking about doing something and then going and doing that thing full force. So I think that in, you know, if you're already susceptible to indecision, it's really a good idea to find methods to help you decide. And of course, things like journaling or, um, you know, connecting with somebody who is knowledgeable about these things and picking their brain about it, um, you know, and which you would do better with is based on your Western chart and um, might do a video on that. It's a really interesting topic. Uh, also, if you are susceptible to procrastination, you should look into some of the myriad of videos that are uh, tips about procrastination and how to get rid of that because that's something that when when it's coupled with the explosive energy of tiger procrastination can be really stressful
Now, as I hinted before, or stated outright, tiger energies are quite explosive. And this does mean that when the action is taken, it seems to be taken in a huge leap. Now, from a personal standpoint, as you know, we were mentioning, that could just be you picking up and moving to Europe or something like that. But in a societal place, this could be eruptions of social unrest or road rage or that somebody in power does something that is really surprising or shocking. And that could be anything from resigning to, you know, starting a war. Now, the plus about tiger is it's interesting because because the tiger sandwiched between the ox, which is a quite peaceful energy and rabbit, which is probably our most peaceful energy. What we see is is tiger kind of leaps out at the beginning of the year, but towards the end of the year, so towards the end of 2022 there's a much quieter tiger that's happening almost like the tiger's tired and needs a nap and so so we're going to see most of this excitement or explosions in the first half of the year so that would take us to probably around this time around july august now because it is a tiger and in the cat family of course we know that cats love to nap and so there will also be periods during the year where it's it feels eerily quiet <laughs> you know just like uh, you know i'm i'm from uh california and we have earthquakes out here and animals can sense an earthquake coming and before an earthquake, we call it earthquake weather, where everything gets super quiet, you can't hear birds, you know, it's, it's like even the crickets are quiet. That's, we're going to have those little periods and then the disruption of energy happening. Now, I'm not predicting an earthquake. Predicting earthquakes with astrology is extremely hard because you have to know where the epicenter was to, you know, or is going to be. And so we'd have to look at every single city or some, you know, longitudes latitudes to find out where the epicenter is and where it's hitting. So that's not my forte. And so I'm not going to predict any earthquakes. Another thing we can expect with Tiger is a level of posturing that says we're ready for war. You know, uh, Tiger is a combative creature and it's so very much ready for a fight if necessary. So there will be quite a bit of talk about war. I'm really hoping we don't actually get into one. I think as a society, we are, you know, more and more realizing the futility of war. And I say that while probably there's still probably many wars going on around the world. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we are not going to go into a war. But, you know, it's as individuals, the thing that we can do is to stay prepared at home, you know, have some water, have some food, have, a, you know, a way to contact people in case your normal means of communication go down you know, have a place you can go if you're out on the road when something happens. So, so just a little bit of taking responsibility for ourselves and our family and being prepared, especially in a tiger year. Now, another thing tigers like to do is gamble because they're up for adventure and a little bit of risk can be fun. And so we may see some, uh, well, yeah, like we haven't already seen a big increase in day trading for stock markets, also entrepreneurs taking big risks and people in general. We may even have people do more walking on tight ropes or base jumping or other things that are high risk activities. Tigers are also quite territorial and this this one is something that is going to reverberate all the way down to individuals. And this means that in general, partnerships that do exist already become more fragile and trying to bring people together for a partnership or an alliance or a co-op uh, or collaboration or anything like that is going to be really tenuous. It can snap apart in an instant. So now when it comes to relationships, this can mean that your current relationship, if it already has cracks in the foundation, could go through a very rough time. On the other hand, if your relationship is strong, maybe this just gives you a few cracks in the foundation or you 
you say, okay, we're going to be territorial, but it's we are going to be territorial against everyone else. But we can certainly see this uh, in the world where governments have made alliances or pacts or things like that. Many things will fall apart that we thought were solid. This also, with this territorial nature, there's going to be an increase of a focus on borders and what separates us from them. And this is, I, I personally don't think this is very uh, positive for the world, um, you know, but I'm not a political astrologer. I do more personal astrology. So, uh, but I do feel that if we could be more open and do more cooperation, that would be better. But we are going to see at least for 2022, a very big emphasis on borders. And that can be both that people are making borders tighter, but also that they are aware of the borders. And so they may try to open up and then the door slams again, etc. This could change in 2023 with the year of the rabbit. So tiger is naturally the element of wood, which is very much about growth. And we are going into a water year. And so we have lots and lots of growth, but, and this might sound a little counterintuitive. We also could have excessive heat. Uh, so when we're going to talk about the water element in a moment, but uh, and which can bring us excessive water, but also we get excessive water because we have excessive heat, because excessive heat means there's more evaporation and the water goes up into the atmosphere and then the water has to come down again and it comes down in a different place and therefore we have flooding. So we are expecting both of those. We're expecting basically the extremes in the weather because of the friction that uh, tiger produces uh, lots of growth happening. Yay, that's great. But we also do have the potential for excessive heat and then lots and lots of water. So when we were looking at the those uh, the, the years going forward, uh, we had already said, you know, rat brought us the pestilence. Ox brings us the rebuilding. Now we come into the energy of the revolt. You know, like uh, if if a change wasn't made or a person's not happy with the changes they made in 2021, now they revolt. Then peace returns in 2023 with the rabbit. And then in 2024, the dragon arrives and we have some sort of breakthrough. And this could mean a technological breakthrough. And this could mean that we get leaders in, you know, different governments that are really helping uh, you know, move the society forward. So I know that this might sound pretty intense, but I want you to remember that we do a tiger year every 12 years. So we had one before in 2010. So one of the things you can do is go back to 2010 and say what was going on that year and see what kind of year that was for you. And, and then, you know, you can even, even go back 12 years before that. And what would that be? 1998 and say, well, what was going on that year? And so you can look back at tiger years and if you moved, you might move again. You know, if you change jobs, you might change jobs again. But if you say, I can't remember anything happening. Well, then this could be a pretty normal year for you. So I just wanted to do a little side note on some folklore. And that is that, that of course, tigers are mostly yellow, but every once in a while there's a white tiger. And it's said that when a tiger reached 500 years old, it became a white tiger. And uh, then at a thousand years old, the tiger would become immortal. I thought that was a really pretty uh, way of saying that. There was also some information that uh, the tiger is the breath of the world. And so that is uh, how like communication gets through, how we connect to other people. So I see a lot of communication energy this year because tiger I associate with communication as well as the element of water. So if we look at your uh, Chinese astrology chart, then we can quickly assess uh, where this tiger energy is going to fall in your chart. And for rat, that's going to be in your area of communication, travel, um, you know, making agreements and trying to put together collaborations. And so that's going to be 
uh, a big focus for you for the year for ox it's going to be money and that is you know uh, are your possessions really helping you what are additional sources of income that you can get are you managing your money well and so you have a lot of money opportunities in the year of the tiger of course uh, for tigers themselves if you're born in the year of the tiger this means a new beginning for you uh, that's a very important time a lot of things are going to change in your life um, you may get rid of a lot of stuff you might get rid of a job you might let go of a partnership so lots of new things for rabbits this is your ending year so you are going to be at the last year of your 12 year cycle and so this is about finishing up things um, projects and things like that also letting go of things you cannot finish over that period of time to just say you know what uh, this is this is all I needed from this and so it can be unfinished and just be let go of and this is also a time where you can capitalize on things you already know and how to do so that's going to be really a big source of money and prosperity for rabbit for dragon this is going to be a lot about community and connecting with people in various ways and that could be in person or via zoom or um, you know through your writings or teachings or things like that for snake this is going to be a lot about career and reputation and how you are seen in the world uh, you know if you are posting and what types of things you're posting uh, are you in the right career is your company solid stuff like that for a horse this is about knowledge wisdom and spirituality and so you might do a lot of thinking about who you are in relation to the universe you might be getting a degree you might be going off and studying in some different part of the world but you're also gaining a lot of wisdom and you might do some teaching yourself for sheep or goat or ram you guys are doing the area of power and resources and so lots of opportunities are there for you and this includes money opportunities as well as people stepping up to help you so I think that you will have probably the easiest time for really connecting with others and holding together a partnership it's still going to be a little tenuous but you'll be able to gather people who you need help from and if somebody does fall away then you'll be able to replace that person or that revenue source now of course um monkey you are doing the toughest of the years uh, as I said in a previous video on the tiger year I think that you guys will be fine because you're so adaptable uh, your focus is going to be on relationships and how you relate to others how others see you how you present yourself in the world and so this is going to be a time where if you are looking for love you can find a love relationship but it will also test your existing relationships to make sure that they are strong uh, and if they're not um, you know you're you're going to either need to do the work to shore it up or you are going to then have it dissolve and find someone else roosters your focus is going to be on health and daily routines and that means that you're going to be looking at the things you do and and how you do them to make sure that uh you know you're doing things the most efficiently that is do you like your job do you uh feel like your routines help you be productive do you just procrastinate if you've had a lot of indecision then you know that's that's something that's going to come up this year and you'll get to tackle that dog this is going to be an adventure year for you you are going to have a great time because uh you know you already like this sort of you know uh, take no prisoners run into the fray sort of energy and at the same time you know you are going to have opportunities to meet a lot of new people so you have very good uh, energy for getting a new love relationship having children uh, doing creative projects so you have a lot of energy that is backed up by this tiger energy so I think you're going to have a great time and finally uh, pig you guys are going to do home and family and that is that you might move uh, you might be bringing the family together and have a multi-generational household you might be helping older relatives find you know where they're going to be living you might be sending kids off to college or things like that so 
big emphasis on home and family. Um, it's possible maybe you're going to downsize or maybe you're going to live in some unconventional place because that would be very tiger energy. So, but the focus is really on the family. So if, if we then looked at the, um, the year of the tiger as a year on the farm, then we could divide the signs up into the seed planting signs, seed tending, harvest, and seed saving. And I'm going to do this in more detail in a future video, but I'll just say real quickly, the seed planting signs, those are the people who need to be doing something new and trying new things. That's going to be rat, ox, and tiger. Uh, the seed tending uh, signs, those are, you, those are the ones who are really started something already. You're just trying to get it to grow. And that is to double down on what you're doing already. That's going to be rooster, dog, and pig. And then if we look at those who are in a harvest year, and that is to uh, that you're going to gain from what you already know how to do, you can get the promotion, you can get additional sources of revenue, money and resources come more easily. That's going to be horse, goat, and monkey. Yes, monkey, you guys are in your harvest year. And then finally, seed saving, and that is where you are you know, working with what you already know and people you already know, doing less new things, but more feeling comfortable about what you're doing already. And so the focus is more on looking at what you have and utilizing that to uh, its best use. And so that could be something like if you already know how to teach a subject, maybe you would teach it one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring, maybe you would do classes, maybe you do a video course, uh, maybe you would do a blog on it, you know, so you would take one piece of information and spread it out that way. And that's going to be rabbit, dragon, and snake. Now let's look at the elements and we're going to be going from a metal year into a water year. And of course, we're going to be in a water year for two years. That's 2022 and 2023. Then we will go into wood years for 2024 and 2025. So how I look at the elements is you have a personal element and then the year is an element. And of course, the year element is the whole world. So that's larger and you would be the smaller. So then when we look at the creative or destructive cycle, we need to incorporate the idea that one of the elements is in abundance. It's the larger and one of the elements is smaller and this affects that cycle. So of course, if you are already born in a water year, it's going to be a water year and so it's very harmonious and this means lots and lots of communication and connecting to people and the only thing you have to watch out for is that you become all talk and no action. If you are metal and you, we are going into the water year, you metal or the smaller the water year is the larger. And so what happens is because metal creates water, you alone are trying to create the entire world. And that means that you have so many opportunities, you could become depleted. You have, you know, everybody asking you, oh yes, you're the perfect person. We want to hire you. You know, we want you on our board. We want you on our team. And so you have to learn to say no know because everybody is pulling on you. You alone are creating the world. Now, if you are wood, you are also on the creative cycle, but now the world that is water is creating you. And that is water feeds wood. And so that is you have unlimited opportunities and that the moment you step out your door and you say, oh, I think I want to start a business. And then somebody comes to you and says, well, here's how you raise some money. And another person comes and says, yes, I'll work your back office. And so you decide what it is you want to do. And then everybody around you says, I will support you. And so, and of course, you know, I'm exaggerating. It's, you know, there's going to be one person who doesn't, and then you're going to, you know, <laughs> leave me a comment and say, well, that person didn't, but the world is supporting you. Now, if you're born in the fire element, of course, water extinguishes fire. So it's on the destructive cycle. And this is that every time you say you want to do something, the entire world pours a bucket of water on your head. And that is that you feel blocked from doing what it is you want to do. And this you should not take personally. I know that's hard to say, but 
it, you can still do what you want to do, but just recognize you're always going to get a no first. And then later you will get the yes, because eventually the water will go pour on somebody else. One of the things you can do with this energy is to do things privately or quietly before you announce it. And so that would be that you start the business on the side. And when you start making a pros, uh, profit, then you tell other people, Hey, I'm starting a business. And then people will say, Oh, that'll never work. And then you say, but I've made all this money. And if you're earth, you are also on the destructive cycle, but you, the smaller are trying to block the water of the earth. And so this means that you are asking for, you know, the job or the relationship or something, but you're also asking for the world to change and sometimes the world will change. And so because earth blocks water, you are able to say, you know, yes, I'll take the job, but I don't want to work that shift. I want more money. Uh, I want a secretary or, uh, you know, a personal assistant. I shouldn't have said secretary. It's so obvious how old I am. <laughs> So, so even though you're on the destructive cycle, this can be a quite beneficial energy for you because if you're willing to ask the world to adjust, you will get some benefits. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned because LaRue wants to say hi.